How's it going, people? Well, I believe I was working on the cure of casual Christianity. Let's see how well I do. I have company. I don't know if they're. Yeah, the neighbor's dogs are getting. They're getting into the act here. Okay, let's see. The remedy. Okay, this is where we left off. A greater future crisis is coming. When the casual, undisciplined, untrained Christian... Wait. A greater future crisis is coming when the casual, undisciplined, untrained children of today's casual ones are baptized into the church, marry, and then are ordained to the ministry. That's an awful lot to unpack there. I mean, if they're that casual, why would they even get ordained and all that? I mean, sounds like a degradation of uh, the uh, institution. Oh. That will amount to whole congregations of very worldly, carnal, lukewarm, and casual people who say they are Christians. That will represent a horrible spiritual crisis. God forbid! May God have mercy! The crisis will come when churches have drifted and shifted to the place where ardent fathers and mothers are no longer able to rear their families to be biblically conservative. <laughs> In those churches, they will leave Unless the ministry provides clear spiritual direction. <laughs> uh, of travel that will assist parents in the biblical rearing of their families. Sincere parents and children must not be let down. We used to say that drifting took several generations. But it is obvious today that it does not even take one generation. I know the generations get shorter and shorter, don't they? As babies start having babies. Children have children anyway. Uh, the Bible is very clear that there will be a greater falling away. Guys, you're going to knock my camera over. Hey, now. Hey, you're not really fighting, are you? I think they're just playing. Oh, you guys. Yeah, a falling away in the last days. Fulfillment of this prophecy is upon us. It's upon us now! Young people, and some not so young, in many churches today, are casual and lukewarm. Spiritually tepid, I guess. <laughs> Unless we discover ways and means to help them or to deal with them biblically. Careful how you do that. <laughs> mm. 
we will become lukewarm, worldly, apostate church, and be spewed out. Our candlestick will be removed. As Revelation warns, the price of apostasy is too great to pay. We cannot afford it. Souls are at stake. Hmm. Some churches are facing extinction. Oh, perish forbid. And some are even closing their doors. Not necessarily extinct, just uh, suspended. <laughs> Unless, wait, others will need a great influx of dedicated youth to keep their doors open. As they say, you don't need religion. Religion needs people. Why can we not learn from our, their mistakes? Only as we focus on the scriptures and maintain its doctrines and time-honored traditions will God save us and our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren, unless, you know, that trumpet suddenly sounds somewhere in between, you know, and it's game over, you know, and everybody collect their chips. <laughs> yeah, last call. The crisis of casual Christianity is upon casual, lukewarm individuals now. They stand at the crossroads and should decide to go in at the straight gate and travel the narrow road to eternal bliss. Narrow-mindedness helps. You gotta thread yourself to the eye of a needle, you know. The crisis of casual Christianity is also upon the church. Church leaders must make infractions matter. Disobedience and worldliness are vital issues. Unfaltering, unflinching faithfulness and stability must be evident in those who are baptized and at communion time. Faithfulness and spiritual stability must be evident at the marriage altar. And, of course, at the time of ordinations. The Lord is returning for a faithful, pure bride clothed in white. It will be a raiment we all know, but nevertheless very precious to him. So let's humor him. And think of the glorious, blissful occasion of bowing down before our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst. <laughs> of the multitude of angels. With the saints of all ages. So you can meet some famous folks. To adore our God forever and forever. Twice the forevers as usual. That will be worth all the travail we must face here on earth to maintain true New Testament Christianity. <clears throat> and that's written by Aidan Gingrich, Rod and Staff Publications. So, made it. And now we can get on to the next laugh track, but I want to know, in closing, what have you learned, except they're kind of uptight about flexibility? 
open-mindedness, things like that. Apparently that's a spiritual tepidness, weakness. Yeah, because believing in shit that you can't prove because enough people before that you respect told you you ought to is a lot better than thinking for yourself. Just make sure the right people are doing that because you could end up a Muslim or a Mormon or a, a Mooney or or one of those ones that that aren't true probably. Anyway, more to come. Peace. The fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. Um, it's a little gray today because there's a forest fire not too far away. So, so far no evacuation notices, but um, I'll let you know.